Hi, my name is Sam Groth. I run a photography education business called Growth Galleries, which covers astrophotography, landscape, and drone photography. I am also creating a dedicated deep sky astrophotography community on school.com. That's school spelled with a, a K. I have over uh, seven years of photography experience and over three years configuring uh, deep sky uh, setups, which is probably what brings you to this video. I hope that you are able to learn from my experiences to save yourself uh, the many hours of time and pain that goes along with uh, learning these things without guidance. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about how I'm approaching remote astrophotography. So there are basically uh, two ways that you can uh, do remote hash photography. One is to build a shed or something in your backyard or on some private property you own. And then also you can uh, rent space in someone else's observatory that they uh, manage. And there's probably hundreds of other telescopes in the same location. So starting with the, uh, the private property backyard solution, right? So I personally don't own land in really dark area of the country or anywhere in the world where I could put a uh, shed for my uh, telescope setup. And uh, yeah, like my backyard is very near to a city, so it would be pretty suboptimal for uh, imaging. So that leaves me with uh, considering uh, the managed observatories. So I've looked at these a uh, number of uh, different times in the past. And so uh, the key factors you want to consider when doing something like this is like, how often would you actually use it? Like uh, what would be the actual uh, cost, right? How much does it cost to rent the space in the observatory? How much does the equipment setup cost? Any maintenance, uh, these uh, sort of things. And uh, so in the past, every time I've considered this, right, the, the costs for the equipment are, are, are manageable, right? You can keep them at, at a minimum. And then also the, the uh, standard upkeep and stuff, you probably can keep that at a reasonable cost. But when it comes to renting the space in the observatory, the, the cost is usually pretty high, actually. It can cost anywhere from like probably uh, Ten to uh, thirty thousand dollars a year, at least, than the estimates that I looked at across uh, a variety of uh, different uh, remote observatories. And so, while these provide great clear skies and probably excellent support, right? Like this is a really uh, high cost to spend on a yearly basis, unless you have an incredible amount of disposable income, or it's your job. And uh, neither of those uh, was the case in the past when I considered this. And so now uh, I actually came across an opportunity uh, recently here where I can get uh, observatory space for uh, it's uh, it's it's a very low amount of money, like uh, less than uh, two thousand dollars a year, and uh, th this uh, just seemed like uh, the right location. So I, in considering this, right, like you also have to consider uh, the weather. And so the weather and uh, the location where uh, my telescope will go is uh, having, uh, they estimate, between 200 and 220 uh, clear uh, sky uh, nights a year. And uh, to, for comparison, we're in uh, the May 4th of uh, 2024 here. I think I have done actual deep sky imaging like one night so far this year where there's been a clear sky and I've been available to shoot. Now, if I could just schedule it on a remote observatory and get uh, even like uh, a, whole, a few more nights, right? Like I'll have a lot more results to show for it and I should be able to quickly improve uh, my skills and hopefully uh, uh, teach you how, how it works and what uh, kind of pitfalls that there can be going through this process. So uh, this uh, just uh, seemed like uh, the right uh, opportunity because uh, uh, I had been looking for a way to build a school community and uh, this observat remote observatory really just kind of uh, fits in with uh, the whole setup in school. We can go walk through there, I can get images, I can share the data with, uh, with uh, you and you can edit the, the same photos that I am and we can compare the results and uh, all learn uh, together. So what are some of uh, the key goals that are, are different with uh, the, this setup than uh, with other setups? So one 
big uh, key right when uh, shooting at a remote observatory at least in my opinion is the ability to shoot on any night right so all of my uh, setups today are using a uh, full color cameras which means that like it just captures rgb all in one shot and then uh, you don't have the ability to split it out and there's a really uh, strong limitation on shooting when the moon is out with, with this type of setup but like if you go with a monochrome camera you can uh, overcome this limitation in a lot of ways you can probably not shoot too much of the uh, rgb uh, color spectrum but you should be able to shoot in uh, the uh, sulfur 2 or the hydrogen alpha wavelengths of light when the moon is out and so this allows you to get a lot more uh, data than you, know, you would normally have in your backyard when you only have limited amount of days around the new moon so uh, i guess uh, what are the key areas that we need to consider so first of all now that we have uh, chosen an observatory you need to have a, a computer to control your uh, setup. You need a uh, mount that is useful for uh, an exact observatory. It has to be able to have a go to home function. It needs to be fully remotely uh, controllable. It needs to have good reliability. All these things are important. And then for a camera, obviously for the main camera, we're going to need a monochrome camera if we're going to shoot with different uh, filters. And then uh, the telescope needs to uh, to match the uh, focal length that is uh, including all of the areas of the sky we want to capture, as well as uh, having good optics. You don't want to put a really cheap telescope into an observatory that really wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. You want to have a proper filter system, which uh, actually can be pretty expensive, so you have to do a little bit of research on that one. You need to worry about uh, a whole uh, guiding setup. So are you going to use a separate guide scope with a camera? Are you can use off-axis guiding, all of these things. Then uh, another uh, one, uh, two things that maybe people might overlook in, in setting up one of these is one is uh, power actually. So if anything goes wrong in your setup, you probably want a uh, separate uh, power uh, control for each of the uh, the things in your uh, setup right so if the mount is causing problems you want to be able to shut it off and restart it rather than having to restart the whole setup and so there's a few different ways you can manage these uh, type of uh, power things and then also for uh, calibration images so when you're in a uh, observatory obviously uh, you're not going to be physically there to put the lens cap on to shoot uh, darks or biases or uh, put some kind of t-shirt or something in front of your uh, telescope to shoot your uh, your uh, your other uh, flat calibration frames so obviously you need a solution for this as well so yeah so basically in this video i'm not going to cover exact pieces of equipment we'll save that for a different video but like how, how am i thinking about finding the right equipment we'll talk about that so basically, uh, when I'm looking to find equipment, I would uh, just look for uh, reviews online is one, one way to go. Make sure that I find people. YouTube is a really great resource who, who are very knowledgeable in the area, who have been reviewing things over time. And if they've seen uh, a setup work, right, like if they have a specific camera, a specific uh, uh, telescope, a specific uh, filter set, and they're all working together, Right, you can assume that if you buy a similar setup, it will also uh, be working. So there's a, uh, a a blogging site called Cloudy Nights, which has a lot of useful information. Um, also, uh, you look you look for experts. Uh, one person who I uh, follow uh, closely is uh, Bray Falls. He uh, has his uh, website astrofalls.com. You can find all of his equipment there. And I look uh, to, toward his equipment to in setups. He has like uh, three or four different remote uh, setups that he runs, and each of those has a different set of equipment. And that's a great reference for what kinds of things might work together and uh, what kind of equipment what, what he actually trusts and use in his setups. Another thing is uh, literally just uh, basic math and then the company spec sheets of uh, the products. So. One area where this is useful is with your uh, filter size. So if you want to use a full-frame camera or a APS-C camera, 
the sensors are different, right? And you're going to need different size of uh, filters in order to be able to light the the, bat, the full uh, sensor with the the uh, sky coming through the telescope. So basically, just doing simple math, you can figure out uh, what might be a reasonable setup here. And then also another thing is for me, since I have actually have a few setups, as you can see behind me here, that uh, like I just look at what companies I've had good success with in the past, and I uh, will continue to probably purchase uh, from those companies. So uh, what questions do you have? Did I uh, miss any uh, thing that you would have considered in setting up a uh, telescope uh, in a remote observatory?